Hey folks, Jer here with the news on The View. I'm on the 15th of September, Thursday, not a Friday. Feels like a Friday, should be a Friday. How is it not Friday? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm, I'm exhausted. This week needs to be over. Um, <laughs> some bits and pieces floating around this morning, so we'll get through it. We're going to just give an update on Friday night's game against Southampton for the under-21 side. Uh, some detail on Jack Harrison contracts, some Bielsa information, some World Cup break stuff. Um, as well as international call-ups and a bit of 49er news. Just a little bit to throw in, just to see. So we start off with Willy Nyonto, and Michael Scubala has been talking yesterday about the prospects of him making his debut for the under-21 side. Uh, Scubala said that he is looking forward to working with Willy and says that he has come in and has been a really good young man since he's been around the place. He has a great character, which is great to have around the place. He said he's a very exciting player and a very experienced player for a, a man of a very young age already accomplished an awful lot in his career at the age of 18 so um yeah looking increasingly likely that willie nanto will make his debut for the 21 side and a chance for us all to see him in action for the first time and see is he premier league ready is he not premier league ready where are we with this so we'll get a good chance on friday to have a look at that so um, and thanks to everyone by the way who's been let me know where i can watch the game apparently it's lutv if you're outside of the uk however however ireland gets bracketed in with the uk so they don't allow us to see the games in Ireland because we're too close to the UK, which is crazy because you can't get tickets for games. Um, but that's an Andrea Radrazzani problem. And if he's watching this, it'd be great if you could fix that. So people in Ireland could actually watch Leeds playing. So um, moving on then to Jack Harrison. And according to Phil, hey, Leeds have been turning their attention to contracts for players at the moment. Jack Harrison obviously being top of the pile. The 25-year-old has 12 months left on his existing deal from the end of this season. So what, about 18, 19 months currently. Um, so 12 months from the end of the year, which you don't want to get into that territory. Um, and Leeds did say that they would be opening talks with the player as soon as the transfer window closed, which obviously it has done by now. So you would imagine that that's moving ahead. Um, so we wait to hear an information around a new deal for Jack Harrison. He's not the only player that should be looking at getting new deals. There's a few. I would like to see Luke Aylin get an extension as well, just even for a year or two. Same with Cooper, another year. Just to, with a lot of young players, those experienced players are very important in the dressing room. Even if they're not going to play, they're important to have there. So um, wait and see about that. Uh, moving on to their former manager and our former manager, Marcelo Bielsa. And Phil Hay has also been talking about the training ground. And Leeds, earlier on in the summer, did say they'd reached out to Bielsa to ask for permission to name Thorpe Arch after Bielsa. Um, we've talked on this before about our own personal opinions. It was Howard Wilkinson's brainchild. And I know he upset a lot of people, but it's a strange one to name after him. <clears throat> I'd rather see a statue or something else named after him than the training ground or the new training ground that they built being named after him. So lots of things there. However, Leeds are still waiting to hear back from Bielsa. So we all heard the, the stories of him being very upset um, when the decision was made to let him go. Um, and I, you'd wonder, is there a piece around this? He's also an incredibly modest man. So having anything named after him wouldn't probably sit particularly well. He would want it named after somebody else known, known the man that he was. But fingers crossed, they do do something nice for Bielsa. He should be recognised for the change in culture that he brought to Leeds above everything else um, and getting Leeds back to the Premier League so some big things there wait and see what happens there but as of now Leeds still yet to hear back from Bielsa um, moving on to the World Cup and while the World Cup is going on Leeds apparently are planning a trip to the States Jesse Marsh will bring the players that are not going to the World Cup for a training camp looking more and more like San Francisco which makes perfect sense like why would you have an affiliation with San Francisco if you're not going to go there and they're not going to come here there was talk and we mentioned this last week in a couple of videos that they're trying to get this synergy between the two brands together so that they can actually do an awful lot more than just the social media piece where they say you know best of luck in your next game and you know they want to get the players together and then they want to get the squads together and they want to show a united front from both teams together so that the be more information will come out that the closer we get to the World Cup, but at the moment they're looking like they're planning a trip to San Francisco, which is great to see that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, international call up. So we talked earlier on this week about Chris Klassen and Leo Hjelda getting called up for the Norway under 21 side. We can now add to that Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson have been called up for the US as well as Matthias Click for Poland. Uh, waiting to hear if we get anybody called up for the England team. Uh, I would be shocked. It'd be, yeah, Bamford's not played enough games. Calvin's gone. So, you know. Um, Calvin Phillips at Man City is a different conversation for a different day one minute last night 
what was he what was he thinking what was he thinking um, and then we talk uh, briefly to close up about the 49ers for anyone who's interested 49ers opened their NFL campaign um, the 49ers opened their campaign uh, this week with a game against Chicago Bears the Chicago Bears are ranked as probably one of the worst sides in their conference um, and unfortunately, 49ers came out on a 19-10 loss. Their offensive line being blamed as part of the reason for that. But a bad day at the office for the 49ers who will look to try and bounce back from that defeat in their next match. So, um, fingers crossed for them. That's a, it's, a, it's not a great start to the season for them. But, we, well, you know, let's see how they get on. And that's all learn more about American football. <laughs> oh, God. Also, one last thing just before we wrap up today. We will be streaming tonight at 10 o'clock UK time or BST if you're in the States. Um, myself, Alex from the American Leeds podcast and Michael from Leeds Faithful will be popping on to have a chat about where we are this season, going over the signings that we've made, giving opinions on where we think the club are with the signings that they've brought in and looking ahead to the, the first half of the season, which we've only got 10 games left of before the World Cup. So we'll be looking at that as well tonight. That's 10 o'clock on this channel. Um, I will schedule it later on. You'll see if you're interested in popping around. If you're there, great to see you. All right. Right. That's it. Five and a half minutes. Not a whole lot going on. Thanks for watching. And I appreciate everyone who's watched the video this week because I know there's not a lot going on. So thanks for the support as usual. And I'll see you tomorrow morning for whatever's flowing around. See you. Bye.